The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller. Or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder. Keypads are a great way to get user input into your Arduino projects. For example, you can make the Arduino output a high signal when you press a key. Or you can let a user input numbers into a calculator. You can even set up a password and make something happen when the user enters it correctly. In this video, I'm going to show you how keypads work and how the Arduino detects key presses. I'll be using a membrane keypad but the setup and code will work with pretty much any keypad, even one from an old telephone. Keypads are described by the number of rows and columns they have. I have a 4x4 matrix keypad here. It's got four rows and four columns with numbers zero to nine and A, B, C, and D keys. There's also a hash and asterisk key. This 3x4 keypad has four rows and three columns. These are what is known as membrane keypads. They're really thin, and there's an adhesive on the back so they can be attached to flat surfaces. If you peel away the backing, you can see the switch contacts under the keys. The buttons are brought out to a female pin header that's attached to the keypad with a thin ribbon cable. The 4x4 keypad has 8 pins, while the 3x4 keypad has 7. Keypads are set up as an array of switches, like a grid. Each button in a row is connected to one side by a conductive trace inside the keypad, and the other side of each button is connected by another conductive trace that forms a column. When you press a button, the row and column traces are shorted, allowing current to flow through the column and row traces. Since the buttons are arranged in a grid, each button press creates a unique combination of row and column connections. The Arduino detects which button is pressed by detecting which row and column pins are connected to the button. First, when no buttons are pressed, all of the column pins are held high, and all of the row pins are held low. When a button is pressed, the column pin is pulled low, since the current from the high column pin flows to the low row pin. The Arduino now knows which column the button is in. It just needs to find which row the button is in. It does that by switching each one of the row pins high, while reading all the column pins to detect which column pin returns to high. When the column pin goes high again, the Arduino has found the row pin that's connected to the button. Here's the pin out of these really common 4x4 membrane keypads. There are four row pins labeled R1 to R4, and four column pins labeled C1 to C4. On a 3x4 keypad, there are four row pins labeled R1 to R4, and three column pins labeled C1 to C3. Connecting the keypad to the Arduino is easy. On this keypad, the row 1 pin is the pin on the left. It connects to the Arduino's digital pin 9. The other row pins connect to Arduino pins 8, 7, and 6. The column pins 1 through 4 connect to Arduino pins 5, 4, 3, and 2. 
If you're using a 3x4 keypad, connect it the same way, with the R1 pin connecting to Arduino pin 9. If you find that your keypad has a different pin layout, you'll need to figure out the pin connections. Let's see how to do that now. First you'll need to build a test circuit. You can use the conductivity function on a multimeter for this, but if you don't have one, you can connect an LED and a current limiting resistor to the Arduino like this. These black and red wires will be your test leads. Let's figure out what pins the rows are connected to. Start by connecting the black wire into the leftmost pin of the keypad. Now press a button in the first row and hold it down. Take the red lead and insert it into the other pins until the LED lights up. There it goes. So that means a connection was made between the row and column pin for this button. So now we know that the black wire is connected to the top row. Now stick the black wire into another pin. Press and hold any key on the next row down. Insert the red wire into the other pins. The LED didn't light up with any of these pins, so that means the black wire isn't connected to that row. So I'll try the next row down. There we go, the LED lit up. So this means the black wire is connected to the third row pin. So go ahead and do this until you find all of the row pins. Now we need to figure out which pins are connected to the columns. Insert the black wire into one of the row pins you found. I know this is the pin for row 1, so I'll stick the black wire into it. Now press and hold one of the buttons in row 1. Insert the red wire into the remaining pins until the LED lights up. So the LED lit up when I connected it to this pin. So this pin must be connected to column 3. Now press and hold another button in that row. Insert the red wire into the other pins. The LED lit up when I connected it to this pin. So this one must be connected to column 2. Now just keep doing this until you have everything mapped out. Okay, now let's see how we can get the keypad to print key values to the serial monitor. We're going to be using the keypad library by Mark Stanley and Alexander Brevig. This library takes care of pulling all the different columns and rows, and also handles switch debouncing. To install it, go to Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries, and search for Keypad. Click on the library, then click Install. Or follow this link to install it manually. That web page also has more information about the library and other functions you can use. Okay, here's the sketch. Let's walk through it and see how it works. First thing we do is include the keypad library. These next two lines are where you set the number of columns and rows on your keypad. I'm using a 4x4 keypad with 4 rows and 4 columns. If you have a 3x4 keypad, just change the columns number to 3. Here we declare a two-dimensional array that defines the keys on the keypad. The elements in the array correspond to the values that will be output when you press a key. 
You can change these if your keys are laid out differently. This is the name of the array. And these are the sizes of the array. The rows correspond to the value that was set up here. And calls refers to the number set up here. Next, we define how the row pins are connected to the Arduino. This is where you can change the pin connections if you want to. This is a single dimensional array. The first element in the array is the Arduino pin that connects to your keypad's R1 pin. The second corresponds to the R2 pin, R3 pin, and R4 pin. So here, R1 connects to pin 9, R2 to pin 8, R3 to pin 7, and R4 to pin 6. Then we define how the column pins are connected. The first element in this array corresponds to the keypad's column 1 pin. So that's connected to Arduino pin 5. The second element corresponds to the second column pin, so that's connected to Arduino pin 4, and so on. Now we create an object of the keypad class called custom keypad. These are all initialization parameters. You can learn more about these on the library's webpage. In the setup function, we initialize the serial monitor. In the loop function, we declare a care variable named custom key and set that equal to the function get key from the instance of our custom keypad object. Now we use an if statement with the custom key variable inside. The get key function returns the value of the key whenever a key is pressed. And that will be stored in the custom key variable. So that will make the condition inside the if statement true. And the program will enter the if statement every time a key is pressed. Inside the if statement, we print the custom key variable to the serial monitor. Okay, let's upload this and see if it works. Okay, great. So whenever I press a key, the value is printed to the serial monitor. In the next video, we're going to see how to connect another useful input device to the Arduino, a PS2 joystick. These devices are great for controlling things like robots and servos. SunFounder is my go-to source for sensors, modules, and other parts for the Arduino and Raspberry Pi. They have a huge selection of STEM, robotics, and IoT kits, and lots of useful sensors and modules. Every product has an online tutorial with wiring diagrams and example code. They also offer free shipping on all orders, with no minimum. Give them a try at www.sunfounder.com next time you need to order some parts.